Welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to talk about finding trigonometric values and angles. So we're going to look, we're going to dig in a little bit deeper at the six trigonometric functions: the sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, and cotangent. If you didn't watch the last video, I recommend that you go back and watch that video to see how I defined those six trigonometric functions. Now. We're going to dig a little bit deeper, so we're going to look at different types of problems, and we're just going to jump in by working an example. And the first example is suppose that the point XY, that's the point on the terminal side of an angle, is in quadrant 2, and then we want to determine whether X over R is positive or negative, okay? So X over R. If you think back to the last video, what is X over R equal to? Which trigonometric function? Hopefully you said cosine. So the cosine of theta is equal to x over r. So technically, we want to know, is the cosine of theta positive or negative if the terminal side of the angle is in quadrant 2? So let me just sketch a, a brief angle, a, a quick angle, that would be in, in where its quadrant or its terminal side, my bad, is in quadrant 2. So this is quadrant 2. Remember, this is quadrant 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's at the point x, y is in quadrant 2. That means x, y is the point on the terminal side of that angle. So this is the angle that we're referring to. And we want to know what is the value of x over r. We want to know if it's positive or negative. And remember, x over r is cosine of theta. Okay, so is the cosine of theta positive or negative in this angle? Basically, that's what it's asking. So we need to first know what is x and what is y. Well, since x is here, our x would be a negative number. So that'll be negative something. And since y is here, our y would be a positive number. So x is negative in quadrant 2 and y is positive in quadrant 2. Now r, remember r was equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared and we said since r represented a distance it was always positive so in this case our r will always be positive. So our cosine our, is x over r, x will be negative and then r will be positive. So we have a negative divided by a positive number which is a negative number. So x over r would be negative. It's negative because our x is negative and our r is positive. We just had to think through it to figure it out, all right? So I want you to try one. Okay, so I want you to try this one. Suppose that x, y is a point on the terminal side and it's in quadrant three. So x, y is in quadrant three. And I want you to, turn, to tell me if y over r is positive or negative. So pause the video and think about it for a moment and get your answer and let's see if you get it right. Okay, if you say negative, then you are correct. So let's just talk about it really quick. So if we have an angle whose terminal side is in the third quadrant, so this is a, a terminal side that's in the third quadrant, then this is the angle we're referring to theta. If we pick a point on that angle, our x, is a negative value, so x, y. Our x will be negative, and our y, which is here, will also be a negative value. Now, remember we said r is always positive because it represents the distance from the origin to that point. r will always be positive, and we want to know what is y over r. So y is negative, r is positive, a negative divided by a positive is negative. So that's how you get y over r is negative. So now question, which trigonometric function is y over r equal to? If you said sine of theta, then you are correct. Sine of theta is y over r. So you need to start learning these and become fluent with them. If you need to make flashcards, whatever you need to do, you need to know really quick what sine of theta equal, cosine of theta equal, tangent theta equal, and then you need to know which ones are the reciprocal functions of those. Okay, let's look at one last example for this video, okay? We want to find the six trigonometric function values of the angle theta in standard position if the terminal side of theta is defined by x plus 2y equals 0 and x is greater than or equal to 0. That means x is positive, okay? So we have basically an angle theta... And it gives us the equation for the terminal side. So it's in standard position. That means the vertex is going to be here at the origin. The initial side is here. But we have to find the terminal side. This time it doesn't give us a point that, the that goes through the terminal side. 
or that the terminal side goes through, but it gives us the equation of the terminal side, which is x plus 2y equals 0. And if you recall from algebra, this is a linear equation. So x plus 2y equals 0. If you want to find out what that linear equation is in slope-intercept form, then you get y on the side by itself. You do that by subtracting x from both sides. You get 2y is equal to negative x. And then you divide both sides by 2. You get y is equal to negative 1 half x. And so that is the equation of the line of the terminal side. And if you want to graph it, you want to pick values of x and y. You want to pick values of x to plug in and then figure out what is the y value that corresponds with it. Because there's a fraction here and the denominator is 2, when I pick my values of x, I'm going to pick multiples of 2. So I'm going to start with negative 2. If I plug in negative 2 for x, I get negative 1 half times negative 2, which is 1. If I plug in 0 for x, I get negative 1 half times 0, which is 0. If I plug in 1, or no, I don't want to plug in 1, I want to plug in 2, I get negative 1 half times 2, which is negative 1. If I plug in 4, and technically I probably shouldn't have plugged in negative 2 because it said that x was positive, but I'll show you that you can still plug in negative just to get the line. Um, I'll show you why. So negative 1 half times 4, I'm sorry, I probably could hear my neighbor more in the yard. Um, but that's nothing I can do. It's out of my control. All right. So if I plug in 4, I get negative 1 half times 4, which is negative 2. So when I go and I plot these points, I have the point 0, 0, which is the vertex. Then I have 2, negative 1. So 2, negative 1 is the point here. And then I have 4, negative 2, which would be the point here. Now, this first one, I had negative 2, 1, which is over here. Um, but because that is a point that goes to that line, but because it says X is only positive, that point won't be considered. So that's why I was saying I shouldn't have plugged in negative 2. So we can just cross that one out. But it's still on the line, but since we only want the positive part of that line, we only take this part of the line. And so remember, an angle in standard position starts here and it stops at the terminal side. So this is the angle that we're looking for. And so now what we want to know is we want to know now you don't. OK, so let me say this. You don't have to um, plot. You don't have to plot. You can actually solve this problem without plotting the line. But I just plotted it because I wanted you to see what the terminal side looked like. What you do need, though, is one of the points on this line. OK, so you need one of these points and I'm going to take this the two negative one. one. All right. So my X is two and my Y is negative one. And now I need to find R. R is the square root of X squared plus Y squared. So R is the square root of two squared plus negative one squared, which is the square root of five. So R is the square root of five. All right. So now we have X, we have Y, and we have R. All right, X, Y, R. Now we can find the six trigonometric functions. So let's, okay, so I had to erase my board to make some space so that we can find the six trigonometric functions for this value um, or for this angle theta. So we first want to do sine of theta. Now sine of theta, if you remember, is Y over R. So it'd be negative one over the square root of five. Now, here's a little something extra. With math, just like you can't have zero in the denominator, you cannot have a square root in the denominator, alrighty? So what you have to do is you have to do something that's called rationalize the denominator. The way you rationalize the denominator is you multiply the top and bottom by that denominator so that you can get rid of the square root from the denominator. So since I have square root of 5 in the denominator, I can't leave that there. I have to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 5. Well, square root of 5 times square root of 5, that's the square root of 25, which is actually 5. So anytime you multiply a square root by itself, you get the what's called the discriminant, the thing that's underneath the square root. So, and this is a negative. So negative 1 times square root of 5 is negative square root of 5. And square root of 5 times square root of 5 is 5. So you actually get negative square root of 5 over 5. That is the sign of theta, okay? 
Now for the, let's just jump right in and do the reciprocal. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant. So if the sine was negative 1 over square root of 5, then the cosecant would be square root of 5 over negative 1, which is just the same as saying negative square root of 5. That's the cosecant of theta. The cosine of theta, remember our three basic is sine, cosine, and tangent. And I just kind of went out of the order that I've been going in and did the reciprocal next. So now for the cosine of theta, that's x over r, which is 2 over the square root of 5. And again, you can't leave the square root in the denominator, so you have to rationalize that denominator by multiplying the top and bottom by the square root of 5. 2 times square root of 5 is 2 square root of 5, and square root of 5 times square root of 5 is 5. So let me box my answers so you can see them. So the cosine of theta will be equal to 2 square root of 5 over 5. Now the reciprocal of cosine is secant theta. Secant theta is just going to be the reciprocal, so put that square root of 5 over 2. You don't have to do anything as far as trying to rationalize the denominator because you don't have a square root in the denominator. All right? Next, we have tangent of theta. Tangent of theta is y over x, so that'll just be negative 1 over 2, y over x. And then the cotangent of theta, which is the reciprocal of tangent, it's just going to be 2 over negative 1, which is equal to negative 2. Alrighty. And so these are your six trigonometric functions for this angle that has this line as the terminal side. Again, I showed you how to graph this line just so you can see it, but you don't have to actually go through the whole process of graph graphing it. You do need to go through the process of solving for y so that you can get an x and a y value. On the graph, and once you use that x and y value, you find r. After you find r, then you can find your six trigonometric values, okay? Let me know if you have any questions about this process. Um, put them in the comments below. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I would appreciate your subscription to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.